Hi, my name is Brian Beam, and I am a motion designer and creative director based out of Austin, Texas. I've been a motion designer for a little over 20 years, and over the last year, I have launched a augmented reality project called Gnosis that has been using the Artivi platform. And so over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you some of these augmented reality t-shirts that I've been developing and show you some of the tips and tricks I've discovered as I've been creating these art pieces. One of the big inspirations for this Gnosis project was a film from the 80s by John Carpenter called They Live. In that movie, a guy finds glasses that lets him see that aliens have invaded Earth, and they've hidden propaganda and subliminal messaging all around us. So Shepard Ferry ends up taking Obey from that movie and creating Obey Giant, but the one thing that he couldn't take was the idea of putting glasses on and seeing what was beneath the surface. And I realized that I, I could take that now and, and run with it. And so all of my designs are about using augmented reality as a way to hide messages and create reveals that are really interesting. Here's one of my recent pieces, Smart Girl. So when Artivive sees the design, it comes to life and reveals, I don't have to prove myself to you. The goal is that it can become a mantra. It looks cool when you see it animate, but it's also just there under the surface. Um, if you wear the shirt, you can channel it. Uh, here's the original design file in Photoshop. My illustration often revolves around collage and photo bashing. I love to dig through image sites with Creative Commons Zero images for inspiration. Uh, Pexels and Pixabay and Unsplash are all sites that I look at on a regular basis. I also love textures, so I'll pull from my libraries and many other places and patch in layers of detail. By the end, I have a giant mess of a PSD that, honestly, I probably haven't named the layers for, and I'll reduce it down to what I might animate. So here's the Smart Girl separated and resized version. Um, you can see that compared to the regular PSD, there's many, many, many fewer layers. So I've got hair separated out, I've got the horns separated out, the face separated out, basically anything that I think that I might animate and that I want to animate on its own, I've separated into its own layer. I've got a couple of layers turned off here just in case I need to go back and get them. The body is separated out, the wings are separated out, and then I decided that I wanted the legs to animate separately. So I went in and I created enough leg uh, where the leg was missing and extended them a little bit. And then some other things that I know I'm going to animate but are just currently turned off. So the sacred geometry is its own layer. The stars. Basically anything that I'm going to go in and animate on its own, I've reduced down. And that file, if we go look in the finder, um, is 30 megs versus the original file, which is 505 megs. So it's, it's a big, big speed difference. So just to summarize, two big tips. Reduce, if you're working on a print file that's 300 dpi and 10 inches by 10 inches, that's like 9 million pixels, which is more than 4K footage. A lot of the animations that I bring into Artivive are really only 1200 by 1200 or even smaller because I'm trying to make sure that they're as small as possible so that they download fast. Um, I don't need all that extra data. And so if I get rid of it, it helps out a lot. And then optimize. In the pipe face design that I did, all of the individual textures that I used from airplanes were um, their own textures. And so baking all of that down into just the layers that I know I'm going to animate makes it so much easier when I go into After Effects and I can understand what's going on. Here's a bit of a roadmap for how my design process works. My flowchart kind of boils down to six steps. Concept, illustrate, concept again, compose, animate, and assemble. I tend to want to have a bit of a plan of action when I get started. For Smart Girl, I had seen the leather jacket she's wearing and started to figure out what was going to go around it. Other times I'll have an idea or an image in my head and I'll search for images that support that. We've already gone over this, but I'll either photo bash or I research a specific style and figure out how to tackle it. For my Surfo Luchador project, I knew the shirt was going to be different than the augmented reality component and 
I knew I'd been looking at 50s tiki-inspired hand type for elements that were going to be part of the piece, so I thought about how I could create a Hawaiian shirt pattern and draw some wrestling and surfing illustrations to make a pattern out of. Those elements also end up showing up in the background of the final piece. If you have something and it's cool, finding some way to get more value out of it later on is really useful. I tend to reuse parts of things a lot for other things in a different context no one notices, and it helps you add extra detail to projects without having to do a lot of extra work. Back to concepting again. Like I was explaining in illustration, this can be a little blurry and I sort of bounce back and forth as I'm working. Sometimes I get a clear idea in my head and I'm just able to work all the way through it. Other times I won't get anything until later. With Smart Girl, a pretty significant amount of time passed between when I first illustrated it and I figured out what I wanted it to do. Inevitably, it ends up happening at the last minute before it goes live. So the weird one is composing. I write all of my own music for my design pieces, and I know that's not something that everyone does. But for me, it's a little bit of its own type of concepting. I don't know that I have synesthesia, and you can see the definition on the screen. But when I hear a piece of music, I can picture in my head what the design is supposed to do. Going back to Smart Girl, I'd never thought about the stars behind her lighting up, but the guitar riff almost made it feel like things needed to be electrified and propulsive. Once I knew what the song was, suddenly I knew what it was going to say. Once I've got the music, I go to animation. This and assembly are probably the two steps that are more about working the plan. You know, the one thing that I'm keeping in mind is how I'm going to assemble an Artivive. The bridge lets you have three MP4s and five graphics if you're using the pro mode. And I tend to almost use all of the video and at least a couple of graphics. Okay, we've got our Smart Girl animation open. And here's the master comp that everything is set up in. So if you remember the PSD we were looking at, you can see that all of the layers have been replicated inside of the comp and anything that I need to do more complicated animation in is pre-comped. I don't always pre-comp everything um, but if I'm working efficiently I will. Um, so here's the star mat that was doing that star chasing and let's take a, a quick look at what's going on with that. So it's actually simpler than it looks if we and we can use the tilde key to expand this. This looks really complicated, but um, what it really is, is just, uh, so we've got mask one here, and we've got a whole series of hold keyframes, and all I'm doing is going down a few frames and then taking my mask and moving it over, and then repeating until it goes all the way across the screen. And then all I'm doing is uh, taking and offsetting those keyframes on other masks. And if you duplicate that enough times on all of the individual layers, you end up with something chasing across it. So then on this master comp, I'm applying glow on top of that. Lots of glows in my work. I love light, I love texture, and that shows up in a lot of different ways. So let's take a look at the sacred geometry. So again, that looks like it's super complicated, um, but it's not actually as complicated as you think it is. So if we use the tilde key again to expand up our canvas, and if you're working on a small screen, I use this all the time, and it makes life way easier. Um, you can see that I've got 10 different shapes, or nine different shapes, and they're each just small little fragments of the sacred geometry. And then, once I've got that set up, um, I apply to trim paths, and there's a whole bunch of different options for path control with a shape layer. And all I'm doing is using a simple expression that says time times 100. And because this trim paths is nested in a contents folder along with all of these shapes, and it's below all of these shapes, it's going to apply it to every single one of those shapes. So if we take the uh, the end and we trim that down, 
say we go to 20 instead of 47, now we're going to have a much shorter line. And it's going to still animate because we've got the time expression set up. So if we bring that up, You know, if we bring it all the way to 100, it won't look like there's anything going on at all because this is offsetting the path, and it's offsetting a full path. So, you know, as soon as we bring that down, we bring the animation back. And the animation's actually happening. You just can't see that it's happening. So we'll go back to 47. The fire eyes are also separate. We can go in and take a look at that comp quick. Um, it's a piece of fire stock footage that um, I'm duplicating on each of these. Um, now, one of the things that I am doing with it is uh, I've got the eyes masking it off, and I've got this duplicated. If it if the fire were reflecting in the eyes, it would be mirrored in each of them, and so um, I don't have it parented to anything. It's just floating in space, um, and so because the head's moving and the eyeglass shapes are connected to the head, it looks like the reflection is moving inside of the glasses when it's really the head that's moving. So anyway, lots of little animation tips that all kind of plug in together. So when I'm done, um, I usually do two things. Um, I either export the pre-comp separately that I've set up, or a lot of times what I'll do is, uh, so inside of this layer, um, these green layers are all my background. So I've got this Smart Girl Master Animation nested inside of another comp. And what I've been doing a lot lately is using Absolute Black, which if we bring up our info panel is 000. You can see up in the upper right hand corner, and I'll zoom in on it, um, the color is 000. And so even our black, our black inside of the design is actually not black. It looks black, but it's not black. So I've got a, uh, a levels effect attached to this and some other little basic color correction that's kind of popping the colors and making them more vibrant, but it's also raising the black level. Um, one of the things that I've run into, and it just really depends on the design, um, but in a lot of cases, if you're using something like green screen, you may end up with some really weird green spill. Here's a shot from the Art of Vibe bridge with one of my initial designs. And there were some clouds that were in the background and I was keying off of green. And you can see that there's some like really odd green fringing. And sometimes it can look a little bit cleaner if you end up using black instead. And so what I'll do is I'll kind of bring these levels up. And if we double click this, you can see that uh, I've got a drop shadow, um, the levels. I've gone in and I've just taken the black level and I've brought it up to something that still looks black, but is not absolute black. And that gives me some room when I bring it into Artivide Bridge to be able to key out the black. So that's a quick look at animating. Let's uh, go take a look at assembling. So one of the cool things about Art of Vive and augmented reality in general is that you're not locked in to just one plane of information. Um, and with this, you can find beauty everywhere design that I'd created. One of the things that I realized is that I could take the biplanes and split them up into two different movie files. And when the biplane is flying behind the bear, um, I can move that to one Z-depth position. And when it's flying in front of the bear, I can move it to another Z-depth position. And it's not perfect, but because of the fact that we're mostly looking at it from in front, when it makes the switch between the movie files, you don't pay that much attention to it. And it actually ends up kind of being fairly seamless. And you get the benefit of having extra parallax information. So when I'm moving my phone back and forth, you can see that uh, you know there's some depth there. It's not true 3D, but tricks, if they work, are completely fine. So for a while, I was doing updates to this sticker that I released a couple of times a week. And one of the updates that I did had hot dogs launching out of the sticker.
And there was one problem with the movie file when you when I loaded it up. And you can see here that when it's launching, um, when I set up the key, it's knocking a little bit of the tunnel that I set up for the hot dog to launch out of out. And you can see behind it to the sticker. So one of the things that you can do is add in a PNG of black that you can position behind where that hole is. Um, and all of a sudden we've fixed that issue with the sticker just because we couldn't do it with the key doesn't mean that we couldn't fix it in another way and again if it works it works just because something is a hack doesn't mean that it's not worth doing so anyways those are a couple of quick assembly tips thanks so much for watching this walkthrough i'll hopefully be back with more tips in the meantime sign up for an art of Vive account and mess with it it's been some of the most fun that I've had doing design work in the past year. For more info on me, you can visit my social media accounts at Beam Creative or visit gnosisnose.com um, to get a shirt of your own. Thanks so much.